Three reasons down and two to go. Here's reason number two. Phil Jackson, he lost control of the Lakers. The beating of the drum replaces the heartbeat. We try to talk about a beat in just playing our games. Trying to get everybody kind of uniting at the same beat, in the same rhythm, in the same mood. It doesn't matter how much yoga or Native American chants you bring into the locker room. At some point, players get tired of your act. And I think the Lakers got tired of Phil's act. Phil Jackson talks about the Zen. What happened to the Zen with Kobe and Shaq? Didn't the Zen keep these guys together? No, they're at each other's throats. I don't think anybody on that team really likes Phil Jackson. Phil Jackson's a difficult person to understand. He's condescending, he's arrogant. When Jackson arrived in Los Angeles in 1999, he didn't embrace his young star. Instead, he used Kobe as a lightning rod, in much the same way he had used Chicago's Jerry Krause. When Phil Jackson was in Chicago, he motivated his team with the idea that here's this outsider, the general manager, Jerry Krause, and we're going to do everything we can to spite Jerry Krause. And when Phil arrived in L.A., part of what he did was he used Kobe as an outsider to motivate the rest of the team. He was the guy that Phil Jackson always identified. You know, when things would go bad, it was Kobe's fault. When they'd win, well, it was Shaquille and Phil. And I think probably that ate away at Kobe a little bit, to the point of driving Kobe away. Phil Jackson has really shaped the public image of Kobe Bryant and was devious in that. During the 2003-2004 season, when Bryant's legal situation cast a long shadow over the Lakers, Jackson maintained his distance from his troubled star. I stood away and apart from Kobe and let him have all the space. And as a result, he needed more attention. And I think he felt unappreciated by me. And I probably played my hand wrong. According to Jackson, he met with general manager Mitch Kupchak in late January of 2004 and issued an ultimatum. The essence of what I said was basically that I don't think I can coach Kobe anymore. I can't reach him. And if you want me to continue on, with this ball club, then the change has to be made. And if you want Kobe on this ball club, then I have to go. I think Phil was tired of the sandbox fights. I think he was tired of the drama. He'd taken that team as far as he could. I basically made the owner make a choice. And I knew the choice was obvious that he was going to stay with the player. If there's anything that Phil Jackson failed at in Los Angeles, it was this building of a relationship with Kobe Bryant. The things that Phil used psychologically to move that team along ultimately eroded the team's nucleus and ended up in, in major conflict. We're down to our final reason. Have you guessed what it is? Stick with us. The top reason why you can't blame Kobe Bryant for the breakup of the Lakers is next. Let's recap the top five reasons why Kobe Bryant is not to blame for breaking up the Lakers. Number five, Jerry West's departure from the Lakers. Number four, Carl Malone and Gary Payton. They failed to bring a championship to LA. Number three, Shaquille O'Neal. He had to be the man. And number two, Phil Jackson. He lost control of the Lakers. Welcome back to the top five reasons you can't blame Kobe Bryant for the breakup of the Lakers. You've seen reasons five through two. Now, the number one reason why you can't fault Kobe. Jerry Buss. It was the Lakers owner who chose form over substance. When Jerry Buss saw Kobe Bryant go up and down the court, he saw Magic Johnson and Byron Scott in the 1980s. He saw Showtime Revisited. Jerry Buss, he said, he wanted a faster, more dynamic team. He didn't want the Rolls Royce, he wanted the Maserati. He had a coach who was not a, really a run-and-gun coach. He certainly had a center who wasn't going to run up and down the court. And he had a guy in Kobe who could do all that. Jerry Buss started his reorganization by dismissing the coach who had brought him three titles. When they got real serious without calling me, I knew things were about to start going down. I said, this ain't something I want to be a part of. 
In the midst of the turmoil, O'Neill demanded an extension to his $29 million a year contract. Bus didn't budge, and Shaq was traded to Miami. It's done. Shaq's gone, and L.A. belongs to Kobe. Jerry Buss had a big problem with paying Shaquille that much money. It was very apparent, actually, that he was declining. You know, he was not what he had been. That's a franchise decision done, in my opinion, for the best health of the franchise. I think Shaq took it more personally than it was intended. I don't take nothing personal, man. I figured they would get rid of me first because they figured that I was the problem to him. And Kobe's their guy. He's the future, whatever that means. And I understood that. Everything broke out about the trade and people blaming me for it. You know, Shaq's leaving. He's not happy there, so Kobe must have ran him out. It's not true. I said, Kobe, I don't want any kind of blame to come on your shoulders. I just want to tell you what I've decided to do and what kind of team I want to have. When Jerry Buss traded Shaquille, he had no commitment from Kobe whatsoever that, that he was coming back. And they were terrified for two weeks. Having opted out of the last year on his contract, Bryant declared himself a free agent and flirted with the idea of joining the Clippers. But Buss was determined to keep his 25-year-old all-star guard. Seven weeks before the sexual assault charges against Bryant were dropped, he re-signed with the Lakers for seven years and $136 million. I'm happy to be back. I'm happy to be playing for the Lakers. I'd love to play a game with somebody knowledgeable about basketball, put them in the driver's seat, and say, what would you do in this circumstance? I'm pretty sure they would have done exactly what I did. Jerry Buss basically said, Kobe Bryant's our most important asset. That's the guy we have to keep happy. And the way to keep Kobe happy is if Phil is gone and if Shaq is gone. I think the person you have to blame for the breakup of the Lakers is Jerry Buss. Well, there you have it, the top five reasons you can't blame Kobe Bryant for the breakup of the Lakers. We can't always change your mindset, but at least we may have made you think about it in a different light. I'm Brian Kenny. Thanks for joining us.